hey it's the empire don't forget to hit the like button the subscribe button and the bell icon for more videos be taking over let's go champ hit that like button hit that subscribe button right now let's go hey it's the empire geo boxing empire back to boxing now nah, man big news man <laughs> sean porter with his recent defeat uh of undefeated fighter Sebastian Formella, you know, he skyrocketed through, he sky right, rocket through the rankings to number one mandatory, or at least the number one fighter in a WBL. And this is a really big deal, man. Um, rarely do you see a PPC fighter uh, exalt himself into the highest echelon of the rankings in a WBL. You know, um, it's shocking because Sean Porter has been the IBF champion in the multiplayer division the ABC champion in the multiweight division and he has fought for the DBA champion in the multiweight division the only belt he hasn't been, fought or been a mandatory for was a WBO right and this is a really big deal because you know PBC fighters rarely see uh and get the opportunity for to fight for a WBO title you know if you actually look through the rankings in boxing uh, most of the titles that not most of the fighters that hold the WBO title are from different organizations so this is a really big deal for Sean Porter, man. The guy has been elite level for the multiple division for so long that it's it's shocking, you know. Um, like I said, he fought for every title, and you know this is the first time he's finally ranked number one in the ABO, which he should have been a long, long time ago, you know. This is a really big deal. Um, if you actually know anything about and follow the sport, uh, Austin Trout actually was suing the WBO because he was number one mandatory uh, for a WBO, and they dropped him from the rankings for one reason or another um out of nowhere and then they reinstated him later but he was supposed to fight for a title he missed out on a couple of a million dollar payday um and yeah he's suing the wbo so the wbo is probably doing this out of fear of uh being ousted for not having any other organizations besides you know not having not having pbc fighters in the in the, in the rankings right uh our Heyman has the vastest most uh far-reaching roster in boxing and it makes no sense to not have a, a pbc fighter in the top uh in the wbo rankings and, and not fighting for titles it just doesn't make make it make sense make it make sense now man sean porter everyone's been calling for him to fight uh, a fighter like a terrence crawford and finally it seems like it's going to happen with when Ter uh, Terrence Crawford is going to make Sean Porter, it's, it's, he's the number one mandatory now, or he at least he's number one. So, you know, um, the fighters in the top 10, you know, he doesn't really have too much to worry about. Sean Porter, Virgil Ort uh, Ortiz is number two. Then uh, Mikey Garcia is number three. And then uh, Ugas is number five. You used to have a whole bunch of fighters that Sean Porter should be able to handle in a, in a top five. The only fighter that could really give uh, Porter a challenge in my opinion is Ugas you know so that being said man I think that Sean Porter is most likely going to be fighting uh, Terrence Crawford next you know Terrence Crawford really can't avoid it so he might have one voluntary defense but now that Sean Porter is the number one fighter you know it's only going to be a matter of time till he's declared the mandatory so you know Terrence Crawford if he's not going to fight these big fights like a uh uh like 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 Earl Smith Jr. or Manny Pacquiao, because the longer you hold that title, the the sooner or later you're gonna run to the boogeyman of the division. And the boogeyman of the division right now is uh, Sean Porter, at least style wise. You know he's aggressive, he's big, and he comes forward and run, runs red lights. You know sometimes you can't box a fighter who has the chin to punch through your punch. So that may mean you might hit Sean Porter, but he might take your punch and hit through you. And with, with like a left hook or right hook, you know, that, that's the kind of guy he is. He'll take one to give one. Sean Porter is an extremely durable fighter. And, you know, the WO rankings finally having top fighters in their division, you know, uh, elevate themselves to the highest rankings. Now, if you didn't know, uh, Keith one time Thurman is in the top 10 as well. He's actually number 10 in the WO rankings. So it wouldn't take much imagination to, you know, mix and match. Keith one time Thurman with a lot of these fighters in the top 10 WBO because a lot of the top fighters in WBO are in fact with PBC, right? I could easily see a Keith one time Thurman versus Danny Garcia, right? Versus Ugas, and I can definitely elevate him uh, very, very quickly. So, man, yeah, this is a really big deal. Um, 
the the door seemingly closing in on Ter uh, Terrence Bud Crawford. He will be forced to fight one of these top PBC fighters one way or another. And like I said earlier, Al Heyman does not owe anything to Terrence Crawford. He's gonna have to fight some elite level welterweights to justify him getting a Manny Pacquiao or uh, Manny Pacquiao or Errol Spence fight, and not only fight them but look spectacular doing it. You know, beating a uh, uh, Sean Porter, you're gonna have to beat him better than Keith Thurman. You're gonna have to beat Sean Porter better than anyone who beat Sean Porter. So, you know, that being said, Terrence Crawford has his work worked out for him, but this is a really big deal, man. This is good for the sport of boxing. You know, it took long enough for it took long enough for a oh to actually, you know, make one of these two UC fighters a top fighter. Now, man, let me know how you guys feel about it, though. Like, comment, subscribe. This is the Empire, Geo Boxing Empire. Peace.